Oh my gosh, this one actually has a clam and a blood-sucking parasite on it. Hey everyone, we're back at it, trying to rescue some of these shrimp from these invasive parasites. It's usually pretty easy to find a shrimp that has a parasite because, well, most of them are infected. But sometimes we're able to find a healthy shrimp that doesn't have a parasite. And if we're really lucky, we sometimes find a female shrimp not affected and capable of laying eggs. Once we've removed one of these parasites, or if we find a shrimp that doesn't have a parasite, they're always quickly released. So this shrimp has a huge parasite. It's just bubbling out the side. Looks like this is a happy shrimp, but it's definitely not. So let's get this thing removed. This festering isopod is literally sucking the life out of Tabitha. Tabitha has no defenses against this invasion, and her condition is only getting worse. It's up to me to help her. This non-native parasite attaches itself to Tabitha's gills and drains her of her blood and nutrients. In comparison, it would be like having a watermelon-sized tick attached to your lungs. So you can imagine the relief Tabitha might feel once this disgusting thing is removed. Look at that. Nice and easy. Ooh, she almost pinched me. Ah, it's such a fat parasite that it's hard to get it. Farewell, Becky. Huh? This is a small shrimp. Yeah. These shrimp can be infected by these parasites at a very young age. This shrimp right here is just a juvenile, but it already has a bulging parasite under its gill flap. Once we finally got this parasite removed, we noticed the male was still stuck underneath the gill, so we got it out of there. You can see his tiny legs moving here. Right after we rescued Tino, we got super lucky and found this really cool crystal and even this ancient preserved snail shell. It's a lucky day for everyone, I guess. If you're enjoying these animal rescue videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and smash that like button. It helps a ton. For me, the most satisfying part about doing this is imagining the relief that these shrimp feel. Take Felicia, for example. I hope you're feeling better now. Bye, Felicia. Oh, hey, Brittany, it's you. I was super surprised when I found Brittany because she had a soft shell clam attached to the bottom of her flippers. I slowly and carefully removed the clam and then discovered a small juvenile parasite attached to her gills. Both the male and female parasites were very small, which means that Brittany was only recently infected. Later, Brittany. We'll probably see you again. There are millions of shrimp out here in these estuaries, and there are two kinds of shrimp, mud shrimp and sand shrimp. The mud shrimp are the ones that are most commonly affected by the parasites. In fact, 90% of all of the female mud shrimp are affected by these parasites and it's preventing them from laying eggs. This is causing the shrimp's population to decline and whenever this shrimp species is extinct, they're going to move on to the sand shrimp species, causing them to go extinct. A snowball effect is going to eliminate all of the shrimp in Oregon's estuaries. What's going to happen when all the shrimps are gone? What are the fish going to eat? What are the birds going to eat? How is it going to affect the fishing markets? It's a huge problem we're still working to solve. I know that removing a few parasites from shrimp isn't going to solve all of the world's problems, but my goal is to build a community of people who care about the ocean and want to make a difference. So if that's you, then hit that subscribe button.